when you're confident you set more challenging targets for yourself if you're not confident you'll constantly set lower targets you won't even you won't even try to achieve a lot more than that your focus shifts to uh, not losing rather than on winning so if you're confident you focus on winning you focus on the right kind of shots whereas if you're not feeling confidence you start avoiding mistakes so you're constantly thinking of mistakes so your chances of making those mistakes increases a lot more and also our own thoughts often become our biggest distraction especially in uh, games like you know shooting archery golf but in every other game as well it's our own thought process it's our own fears our anxieties the self doubts and all yeah they often actually distract us because rather than focusing on on the ball in front of you uh, or the track in front of you you start focusing internally on your own thoughts right sport is all about highs and lows right yeah. and the thing is what you know sometimes don't realize is that to win to become a champion you need to just get one point more than your opponent it's not like you can't make any mistakes you can make 19 mistakes as right. long as you get 20 right <laughs> those are the odds you won't find a single player a single world champion who hasn't lost their fair share of matches or who haven't been down at various points in their match in their career as well right and what better than sport to teach you the highs and lows and the wins and losses uh victor frankl said that uh, between stimulus and response there is a space and in that space is the power of your choice Welcome to the Garma Star show. In today's episode I have with me Divya Jain who is a sport and counseling psychologist with the Department of Mental Health and Behavioral Sciences Fortis Healthcare. She's the head of psychological services for the Fortis National Mental Health Program. Divya completed her postgraduate studies in psychology from the University of Delhi with a specialization in clinical psychology and is a board certified sports psychologist from the American Board of Sports Psychology. She holds an IOC diploma in mental health in elite sport from the International Olympic Committee and has also completed a certification in psychology for high performance sports from FC Barcelona's Barca Innovation Hub. She has been a member of the Medical Commission of the Indian Olympic Association. Divya has co-authored and contributed to several books in the field of psychology and mental health. She has also contributed a chapter in the Handbook of Sport Neuroscience and Psychophysiology. Thanks for joining me Divya such a pleasure to have you on my show pleasure to be here So please tell us a bit about the benefits of sports psychology and what tactics or strategies you adopt to successfully coach your students So when it comes to sports psychology there are two separate aspects that we look at both of which are related to one another one is performance enhancement which is how an athlete who is already performing well can move forward and do even better than they were and the other is their personal well being which is the mental health and well-being their emotional well-being how they're coping with their stresses right and it's important in today's age that we make sure that we're focusing on both uh, also because our athletes are important their mental health is important but also because both of these are very closely linked together okay so when it comes to performance enhancement there are a few specific techniques that we would be using visualization is a very uh, common technique that a lot of athletes are also familiar with where we're able to visualize certain uh, performances uh while we are playing we're able to visualize the technique that we're using what this does is uh you know there's a lot of uh, confusion there's a lot of people don't really understand how visualization helps but it's essentially a form of mental practice so when sure. you want to use it to boost your confidence to relax to just practice more that's one way of doing it uh we look at focus training how to make sure that you're focusing on the right things not getting distracted uh if you if you lose a point how do you bounce back how do you manage your emotions not get carried away by that and come back to what it is that is important uh, we look at a lot of psyching up and psyching down so how do you manage your heart rate when it tends to increase how do you bring it down if you want to pump it up what do you do the right kind of body language the things that we say to ourselves our internal chatter the self talk as well these are some of the techniques that we use uh, as part of sports psychology 
fabulous fabulous so can you also uh, you know tell us a little bit more in detail when you uh, like you know uh, starting with visual visualization what is the right way to visualize and if say i want to visualize about some performance even say you know i have to go and give a ted talk or say some some uh, <laughs> some performance is there how do i visualize why what's the right way of visualization that's an interesting example because sports psychology is about performance in general so whether you're public speaking whether you're in performing arts whether you're playing a sport it has a role in all of these so one the word visualizing can sometimes be a bit misleading because it's not just what you see we want right. to use all our senses so what can you hear what can you feel how can you uh, what can you touch what the what is the movement of your muscles feel like so the more senses that we use when we try and imagine or visualize in our minds like what's happening the more realistic it becomes we also need to make sure that it happens in real time not necessarily speeding it up or slowing it down because that changes the tempo what's also important is to know why we're doing it again are we doing it to boost our confidence are we doing it to relax so if we're doing it to boost our confidence we look at ourselves playing our winning game we won't necessarily look at ourselves standing at the podium that's not that's not it right because we sometimes confuse that it's about how you play your winning game so that you reach the podium and that's how you look at confidence if it's relaxation you can imagine yourself at a beach uh in the mountains in a forest you imagine some calming the sound of water the wind the birds chirping those are things that tend to relax us sure we can also use it as practice especially for people who may be recovering from injury or who are learning a new skill right mm-hmm. uh, so you can only do a certain number of repetitions when you're actually on court beyond that you'll get fatigued but if you can imagine the same movement uh, mm-hmm. happening again and again so that's a kind of mental repetition that we're also doing so that we can enhance our performance in the same way fabulous wow i mean it's so powerful i mean uh, you know sometimes we tend to uh, you know not give it so much of importance but i think it it's really powerful after visualization you mentioned a few more things uh, that the strategies can you please tell us a little bit more in depth about each of that uh, you know how to do that how what's the best way to uh, you me- mentioned about uh, you sp- spoke about something about focusing also i think uh, so can you please tell us a bit about that with focus what so focus is referred to as the currency of performance right it's essentially right. when we're stressed when we're nervous uh, a lot of different challenges come up it's essentially a focus that tends to shift and that's what creates problems in our yes. performance right yes. and to understand focus we need to recognize that focus is like a spotlight right we don't lose focus it just goes somewhere else so the light doesn't go off it just shifts to something else that's probably not as relevant right so first we need to recognize what are distractions so what other people will think are distractions what other people are saying uh, the environmental conditions sometimes the scoreboard is our biggest distraction because you know it's outside the court it's never in the court the result is something that always comes after the game never during the game so sure. you have to sure. focus it has to be very here and now and not something that's in the future or something that's far away so and also our own thoughts often become our biggest distraction especially in uh, games like you know shooting archery golf but in every other game as well it's our own thought process it's our own fears our anxieties the self doubts and all yeah they often actually distract us because rather than focusing on on the ball in front of you uh, or the track in front of you you start focusing internally on your own thoughts right so if players can be taught the right kind of focus so typically an external focus is much more effective when we're performing than an internal focus so okay. focusing on the movement of my hand will be helpful say when i'm learning a skill right focusing on where i want to hit the shot is going to be more helpful when i'm performing it in a competition situation once i've become an expert so uh, to give you an example if you want to jump as high as you can right there are a couple of ways you can do it one is that you can focus on your muscles contracting and jumping but if you're an expert what we want you to do is we want you to touch the ceiling so if your focus is on touching the ceiling your body yeah. automatically is going to move in the most efficient way because it's something that you've already trained for you're not trying too hard you're not trying too less you're just letting yourself flow and because you have that focus which is you know a high confidence focus looking externally you're actually able to do that more efficiently we also use uh, a lot of mindfulness based techniques that's something that is becoming increasingly prominent in sports which is 
you know how you're just able to be in the moment whether yeah. you're focusing on your breathing whether you're eating a little snack whether you're going on a stroll these days we're so caught up with our smartphones with a thousand different things <laughs> you know it is so distract uh, you know this distraction oriented uh, the environment has become yes, yes. so yeah, even, yeah. even five minutes even two minutes if you're able to just not fidget not get restless just stay in the moment that that's probably the most effective way of uh, building your focus Wow. and then how do you stop that uh, you know that chatter in the head and how do you stop thinking about that chatter i mean honestly it's difficult to stop thinking about the chatter because yeah. it's so natural it's something that's there all the time but what we need to do is we need to get some distance from it okay what happens is that chatter comes in close to us that's the only thing that we can focus on because we feel like it's important yeah yeah we feel like it's important to focus on that we don't have to change the chatter we yeah. have to change our relationship with the chatter okay we start recognizing that that chatter is distracting us most of the time those thoughts don't come true those fears don't come true whether positive or negative a lot of times it's it's never what we exactly that thought that we had imagined it to be right? sure uh, so you know oh people will be very disappointed if i lose the match what if this happens what if this happens yeah um, eventually you just it's a new day you just start all over again the world doesn't change life goes on right so if you're able to recognize that relationship and change it not react to all of those thoughts but instead focus on what is important to me what are my priorities what are my values and and try to do that that's what we need to do yeah and also i think sometimes we give a lot of importance to what people are thinking about us or you know and i think most of the time people are not thinking about us i mean so it's just <laughs> we just have to learn to shut off that uh, you know critic sometimes so yeah so um, you also mentioned about you know some you know the heartbeats uh, you know going up and down i think uh, and how does that help in you know kind of high performance and uh, in i mean how in what way does it help so basically what happens is that um our body has a natural response to stress right so when we're any any kind of pressure our body yeah. responds in a certain way so our heart rate tends to increase our breathing becomes a bit more shallow and faster our pupils dilate our blood rushes to our hands and legs muscles tighten up we've all experienced it before an exam uh, we've experienced it before a public speaking event or athletes have experienced or butterflies in the stomach and all this stuff all of this <laughs> <laughs> thing here is that this is the mind's fight or flight response it's usually what gets triggered in an evolutionary context when we have okay. any kind of threat right what happens is that players often tend to misinterpret this as something negative that's happening not recognizing that this is actually the body's way of energizing it's the heart oh. beating faster so that you can run faster or you can fight off a threat faster right. so let's say there's a there's an animal chasing you so how do you run faster so actually in a lot of sports like explosive sports let's say you're in a sprint let's say you're in combat sports in those kind of avenues this pressure can actually help you perform better because your body is automatically stronger sure sure so then what happens is in some sports again like like shooting or archery or golf that require uh, you know a lot of times you have to shoot in between those heart rates and things like that you need to be generally calmer so that you're not trembling shaking in any way so that right. it's about lowering your so heart is it possible to control that also i mean control how much uh, anxiety we are feeling and control that heart rate and all i mean to a large extent uh, to a, not entirely but to some extent it is and so there are certain techniques so for example our heart rate is very closely linked to our breathing okay so when we have a longer exhalation slower deeper breathing that's when our mind gets a message that okay there's no threat here you can relax you don't need to run away from anything right so deep breathing long exhalation fast exhalation these are all ways of reducing our heart rate got it then you know you can also reduce your muscle tension so if you you notice that your shoulders are uh, hunched up if you just relax your shoulders you just relax your eyebrows your jaws again the body gets a message there's a constant feedback loop we change any one thing you know you change your body your mind changes you change your mind your body changes there's a very wow. close reciprocal relationship so you can manage your body language and relax physically um our heart rate also responds to the kind of music we listen to it goes yes. up and down with that again we can use relaxing visualization we can listen to all of these aspects this can also sometimes bring it down if we want to bring it up again if you're let's say a sprinter 
and you need to get more energized or you're a boxer or a wrestler and you need to be more energetic right then you jump up and down a little more you take out louder sounds before going in uh, you know you listen to more pumped up motivational music you can pace around a little more speed up your uh, movements so these are ways in which you can energize yourself uh, feel more alert feel more awake and this way you can pump it up rather than relaxing it so you need to know one what is the requirement of your sport sure but more than that what is your own kind of zone of functioning and how much of a pressure level do you play your best because you'll often find players saying we need some pressure because if yeah. there's no pressure there's no motivation there's no there's no fight right how do you understand that how do you understand what is the pressure we excel at i mean how much pressure do we need honestly it's to come from experience okay uh, players will have experience so a lot of times just talking to them recognizing okay what have been some of your best performances yeah. and you notice that in your best and not so good performances your preparation was the same you know your technique you were doing pretty much the same thing some days it clicked some days it didn't so was there something mentally different that you so were doing so all analysis mindfulness and you know kind of making notes and you know kind of understanding the behavior and all the stuff the patterns and all so, so self awareness becomes actually very important as a component of sports psychology So yeah, so yeah. I mean, this is the concept of I think mind-body connection. Uh, yeah, so that that's how it works. Super, super, super. So looking inside the mind of a winner, so what factors do you think are linked to success in any sport? So I think whether your success in sport, whether success in most other aspects of life, I, I think they're similar. Uh, for me, there are two that are probably the most important, although several things contribute. One would be confidence. I. I if you can't believe in yourself you will not work hard to achieve that now this confidence doesn't come in isolation right i can't just say i'm the best i'm the best and it will happen you need to do things to kind of back it up right sure. whether the practice that you actually put in the effort that you put in uh, that's probably going to be the most important aspect but the reason why confidence is important uh, for success is because one when you're confident you set more challenging targets for yourself If you're not confident, you'll constantly set lower targets. You won't even you won't even try to achieve a lot more than that. Your sure. focus shifts to uh, not losing rather than on winning. So if you're confident, you focus on winning. You focus on the right kind of shots. Whereas if you're not feeling confident, you start avoiding mistakes. So you're constantly thinking of mistakes. So your chances of making those mistakes increases a lot more. So that's one aspect where you set more challenging goals. your focus gets directed in the right kind of direction what also happens is that we then work harder um so let's say if i believe that i can you know dive and reach that shot or reach that catch hmm i'm going to make that dive i may catch it 5 out of 10 times but i'll make that dive 10 out of 10 times whereas if i don't believe right. i'll just stand while the ball passes me by i'm not even going to move because i'm going to think what's the point so we work harder at achieving those goals and then what happens is that we also don't give up because i believe in myself i believe in yeah. my ability so i know that okay maybe i need to do this different maybe i need to do that different maybe it was the situation uh, because yeah. of which i wasn't able to perform my best so i'm also not going to give up so you look at all of these higher better uh, goals yeah working more to achieve them not giving up a clearer goal oriented focus this becomes a very effective strategy towards working towards success and the other besides confidence for me would be resilience wow because yeah sport is all about highs and lows right um, and the thing is what we are sometimes don't realize is that to win to become a champion you need to just get one point more than your opponent it's not like you can't make any mistakes you can make 19 mistakes as right. like you get 20 right <laughs> those are the odds you won't find a single player a single world champion who hasn't lost their fair share of matches or who haven't been down at various points in their match in their career as well right and what better than sport to teach you the highs and lows and the wins and losses so if you're in a field where you're constantly confronted by wins and losses the ability to learn from mistakes keep them in your stride not get too caught up with them and to keep looking forward so i think that's the second element that i would to, uh, would bring up here fabulous fabulous resilience is all about i think uh, you know to you know uh, not take these setbacks uh, not get not feel so uh, low with the setbacks but to you know kind of bounce back yes. bounce back stronger so that's resilience i think that resilience can also be developed 
I mean, uh, it's not necessary that you know we are born resilient. I think uh, some people maybe. I mean, you know, it's it's a state of mind, but also I think it can be developed uh, by, uh, as you mentioned, I think by self talk and by um, you know, kind of having a strong strong network, sleeping well. I think I read it well. So I I think re- resilience definitely is very very important. Um, also, you mentioned about confidence, um, which is very important. Uh, um, how does one develop confidence if so definitely through practice because as more you practice the more you confident you become and practice pra- practicing the right way mm-hmm. any other specific techniques you suggest to increase um, confidence and uh, to learn how to i mean achieve so uh, a few so first of all uh, when you mentioned right resilience can be learned uh, all of these skills that we're talking about we're calling them skills because they can be learned all of these things can be learned. so we're not born oh. confident we're not born resilient in right. how we what we learn how we interact with other experiences that we have so with yeah. confidence there are a few things that we can do which are very simple one is to not compare ourselves with other people who oh, yes compared to the odious absolutely there's nothing that saps our confidence more than yeah. us comparing ourselves right so okay. you need to recognize what your own strengths are and play to your own strengths a lot of times we focus on trying to hide our weaknesses right rather than focusing on your strengths but let's say sachin tendulkar will focus a lot more on his batting rather than worrying about the bowling aspect of of the sport right uh, sure. that's what needs to be focused on so we need to back players on their strengths and encourage them to not compare now here it's important for us as everyone else also to not have that comparison it's also important for players to also just set their own benchmarks look at yeah. how i performed yesterday how am i performing today right and that's going to be the only differentiator and that's where i look to keep improving right that's yeah. that's one aspect of it a uh, second would be body language right oh, so yeah. like i mentioned there's a reciprocal relationship between our mind and body like you mentioned the mind body connection right so if i'm feeling under confident my shoulders are going to be drooped i'm going to be looking down i'm going to be making eye contact with people i'll be sluggish in my movements it's something we see when players are having a little bit of a dip during a game as well right so what we can do is if we can just change that body language directly right so right. encourage players that in between two points you know just off before a tournament make sure that you know your shoulders are relaxed and straight make sure your back is straight make sure you're making eye contact with people <laughs> so does that you know sometimes uh, this thing about faking it does it work i mean you know when you when you're very very nervous they say why don't you just smile and just fake a smile and you'll end up feeling you know better and all so does it does that also work yes there is research to suggest that uh, even if you are feeling sad or you're feeling bad and you just put on a fake smile uh, your mind reads it reads the changes in your muscles of your eye it reads the changes here and it actually tends to cheer up so yes this is a there is this feedback loop okay. that does exist between the mind and the body so yes you can cheer yourself up uh, uh-huh. by putting on a smile you just need to make sure you involve the eyes and the face entirely right. yeah, uh, yeah and similarly with your the rest of your body language your eye contact these things also right and then it's about what you tell yourself right so exactly if i tell myself what if i lose what's going to happen uh, i must win this i need to win this those are things that are really not going to help us if we uh, you know but instead if you focus on you know what we say to ourselves okay i'm prepared i've done this before i can do this i'm the best uh, that's something mohammad ali used to say you know if you want to learn about confidence read about mohammad ali he used to say that uh, i'm the greatest and i said that even before any other words uh, so if you want lessons in self confidence then that's probably where we should go to <laughs> but is there a difference between confidence and overconfidence i mean i mean how, there's a very thin line no i mean so how how does that one define that if um, you know calling yourself the that, greatest that's actually a question that comes up a lot uh, in our conversations but actually if you really understand it there is confidence and yeah. there is lack of confidence right so lack of low self confidence and overconfidence is two sides to the same coin Oh, okay right when you have self confidence it's based it's grounded in your awareness of yourself your strengths and your weaknesses it's grounded in the efforts that you have put in 
on your past experiences so that's where you derive your sense of confidence from sure whereas if you don't have that self awareness or you're trying to compare yourself you don't really focus so much on your own strengths and weaknesses that's when you have that lack of awareness and lack of confidence sometimes to compensate we portray ourselves as being extra confident when we're really not mm-hmm. right so that's when over confidence in that sense becomes a problem that is also a manifestation of low confidence low awareness only but if you're confident and especially in sport it, it's good to have a little bit of an attitude going good to have a little bit of a swagger uh you know mm-hmm. again like i said looking up looking positive smiling at people looking relaxed looking unfazed these are all signs of good solid strong uh high confidence and that's what we need to get to awesome awesome so anxiety management is also an important aspect in sports uh, performance so what steps do you think one should take to overcome you know anxiety and pressure uh, any anecdotes that you like to share so i'll uh, share one example i was uh, working with someone who was a swimmer and uh, you know they were uh, before going into one competition there was a lot of pressure you know the usual it's a ranking competition it's a qualifying competition uh, want to make your personal best there's a lot of those kind of pressures that come into uh, the picture so mm-hmm. what happened was that when you have that kind of pressure like i described the fight or flight response um, right you know where uh, heart rate changes breathing changes muscle tension changes what also happens in this case is for a lot of players they feel some trembling in their right. hands and legs now what a usual response to that is that you want to control it so you want to sort of control your hands make them tighter you want to ground your feet further onto the block right so whether you're a swimmer or a racer sprinter you you try to do that it it even happens in racket sports where you try and hold on to the racket a lot tighter now what happens here is now your suddenly your grip has changed and so if you have to make a very quick race off the block at the sound of the whistle you dug in so deep that now you're not going to be able to do that so because your body was trembling you didn't understand what was happening you're trying to control it you become tight up and so you're not able to get such a fast jump exactly so what yeah. we have to do is we have to change the interpretation of that so in one case what we did was we were like okay uh, you know think about an airplane and notice when it's just about to take off how much it travels you'll notice that it shakes like that and the yeah. reason like that is because that's when it has its maximum force because it's getting ready to take off yeah so you don't try and control it you don't try and you know uh make it more tense instead you understand that this is your body's response and this is your body making you stronger this is your flight response that's kicking in so you're actually going to be faster so if you're having these changes don't get worried don't try and control them don't suddenly try and change your breathing and things like that that recognize that this is pressure that is energizing this is energy that's going to actually help me perform better wow so the next day when the whistle blew they were able to fly off the handle uh fly up the block and yeah. uh, dive right in so, so that's one example so the perception of pressure yeah looking at pressure as a good thing as a challenge and recognizing that yes i'm prepared i can do this is a very effective strategy uh to cope with pressure um again what happens also is that often we don't train to deal with pressure so we're training our technique we're training our strategy but we don't really train uh what to do when we come under pressure situation so practice and matches are often very different and again things seem seem to change a bit our grip will change a lot of yeah. times notice players footwork changes it slows down a lot of times players in pressure will play faster as well so that rhythm also tends to change a big difference that happens is that our goals tend to change so in practice you're focusing on your skill your technique you're focusing on what to play what you know but suddenly in a competition you're focusing on winning so your here and now focus shifts outside yeah so it, if your goal changes right mm-hmm. without, uh, without you recognizing it under that pressure then somewhere it, it's like changing your grip and playing it it's going to make that much of a difference because your focus mm-hmm. your entire strategy everything has actually changed without you realizing yeah. so if we can simulate more and more pressure in competition uh, in practice practice uh, so that players are used to coping with that pressure and in that we then give them techniques okay how do you do your breathing at this time uh, how can you switch off and switch on yourself how do you deal with a you know if you're upset with the referee or you're 
get distracted by something if the drift is not going according to you the equipment is a little bit different so you simulate all of those different situations and look at how players cope with that you give them the right breathing strategies how they should warm up and come into the game how to then control their tempo not get carried away not start playing too fast not start playing too slow yeah and if, even if the audience is reacting and you know making uh, hooting or maybe not, supporting or not supporting i mean you know i mean yes. so one should be able to yeah, handle all that yeah 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 so these are some are some ways that we deal with anxiety awesome awesome so what do you what do you think about perfectionism i mean so do you think uh, perfectionism is one's enemy i mean uh, so i uh, you know i um, i define perfectionism as uh something um oh, one second i had read read it in one of the readers digest i, I remember i used to read a lot in uh, pele um so you define uh, ha so you define a perfectionist somebody who takes great pains and then give it to others so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so what, what do you think about perfectionism so is there anything i mean can you ach- achieve perfectionism um Actually, it's a double-edged sword, right? So there's one aspect which is that uh, the kind of stakes that the the kind of uh, precision that is required in a lot of sport is something that only comes when people strive to be that perfect, right? Are you able to have the discipline to hit that same uh, shot at the exact same point a hundred times and mm-hmm. not get frustrated, not get give up? Uh, you win or lose by one millisecond, sometimes half a millisecond. So there. Yeah. pressure and it's only if players have that attitude to wanting to be their best and wanting to keep improving that's actually the only way that you will get an athlete performing at that level so yes that that drive does help us at the same time sometimes that perfectionism can can turn against us as well that happens actually it doesn't happen so much in our practice uh, in practice it can take the form of overtraining actually which is something that players need to be careful about Uh, but a lot of times that perfectionism is something that creates a problem in matches okay uh, because in practice you have to initially be a lot more deliberate focus on your technique so for example you know you're a, you're a racer race car driver um, yeah. so you know when you first start driving you have to look at okay where's the clutch what what is the gear and things like that but after you've driven for so many years you don't you don't think about it it's it's second nature yeah yeah you just start thinking about it chances are you're going to make some mistake So it's only if you focus on the road that your body will automatically coordinate its movements. Sure, sure. But sometimes when we are trying to be too perfect, we suddenly become very self-conscious. Right. Right. Uh, again, something that will happen probably before a shot. So if you are a racket sport player, it's going to happen between two services. Right. Uh, if right. you're a sprinter, probably just before. If you're a gymnast, just before your race. Um, so it's and if you're a shooter golfer again then it's going to happen between those two shots when we're just thinking we're not actually actually and then when we start the movement we want to be so particular that we suddenly start focusing on our own hand on our own grip rather than the things and all this why i am like that oh god i it's so <laughs> how to deal with that how to not think and how to not become conscious i mean because then you you know you want it to go perfectly the way it should be following all the rules and regulations techniques have to be proper you think you start thinking about all that i think uh, unless it becomes a second nature then i think then because if it's not a second nature then it happens i think then you become self conscious so it is it's second nature but then you start doubting that second nature so you don't trust your training at that point Right. You feel like you need to be even more careful than what you are every single day. Oh. And that's when you know. Let's say you have a really narrow road to drive on. Sure. You have to drive your best when you're just driving. Right. And suddenly, if you start looking and start worrying and really slow down suddenly, and you make those stupid things, things are going to go a bit off, right? So it it happens when we're not able to trust our training. We right. drive too hard. So what that will do is the tempo of our performance is going to change. A lot of times in shooting, we find that. you know you wait at the side just a second or a millisecond longer right so that your breathing changes your hand starts to move a bit now you're suddenly confused should i make this shot or should i cancel this shot yeah so all of those kind of self doubt this is also something that we've noticed happens you know initially a uh, lot of players are spoken to initially they play because they love the game that's how all of us get into sports right it's just so much more fun than sitting in a classroom yeah and so that's how it starts you do well and there's no pressure at that 
time. But suddenly once you get some medal, some recognition, now expectations start to build up. Right. Pressure start to build up. What will this person say? What will that person say? And so those two things are very closely related. We start focusing too much on what other people are saying. And to make up for that, we try focusing too much on our technique, become overly self-conscious too much in our own heads. And we're not actually able to play our natural game. So that's when perfectionism becomes a bit of a problem. Absolutely, I think uh, what you're saying completely makes sense. So, um, so will you like to mention some beneficial mental training exercises that one should incorporate in our daily lives for our well, well-being, etc., or something? So, uh, mindfulness is something that I would recommend all of us do, whether whether we're athletes, whether we're working in corporate, whether we're performing, whatever we're doing. Uh, mindfulness is extremely helpful, and we can do this in various ways. Uh, so, with a lot of athletes, I would tell them to just you know sit down keep their phones away for two minutes, five minutes and just try and focusing on the sound of their breathing or focusing on sounds in their environment, not getting agitated, not getting judgmental or irritated with ourselves, but just kind of noticing it and letting it pass and come back to our breathing every now and again. So uh, mindfulness and meditation is the same thing or is it different? I mean, uh, it, it, you can call it a kind of, I mean, Yes, you can do with open eyes also. I think meditation, you generally do it with closed eyes. Yes, so mindfulness is basically about being present in the moment. Yeah. And not being judgmental. These are the two aspects of mindfulness. Right, right. So, okay. when we train players, a lot of times we tell them to first start with just this drill where they keep their eyes closed, try and do this for two minutes, five minutes. Um, and if it gets frustrating, that's great because that's the only way you actually... You know, it's like when you go to a gym, you don't build strength on the first repetition, you build strength on the last repetition, which is the most painful, right? So if you can sit around, say, without any stress for a couple of minutes, then you need to make it a bit more difficult, a bit more challenging. So this is something that helps control a lot of the restlessness. Uh, but this is something that mindfulness is something you can practice anywhere. Again, while eating, you know, uh, try one screen-free meal a day. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how many of us will succeed. <laughs> right. So, so Yes. So when you, when you're saying mindful eating, so we should then you know kind of pay attention and be mindful of every bite and how many times we're chewing the bite. Sort <laughs> <laughs> of, sort of. So you know the 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 texture of it, the temperature of it, yeah. the sound of it, the smell of it, the colors of it. And yeah. even if you're not counting, just again try doing it without without a screen in front of you. You know, most of us will find that very hard to do. It could be you know when you're making yourself a cup of tea. You know, just immersing yourself in that experience where you're, you know, smelling the tea, listening to the sound of the boiling water, right? Pouring the tea, how that feels like, how that sounds like. Then just sipping, sitting and sipping it uh, in a little bit of peace and quiet. So this is actually a very effective strategy. I think all of us should try. And I don't expect any of us to go beyond five minutes because you know, that in itself is going to be uh, quite the achievement. Uh, five. Do you think it's enough? I mean, if we are able to achieve mindfulness for five minutes, do you think it's it's good enough? I don't know how many of us can manage it right now. So I believe in setting achievable targets. <laughs> but I mean, like you know, if do you think these monks and all they must be practicing ma mindfulness for for longer number for the hours also? I think I'm sure because that's that's the way you know the, the lifestyle is and that's the way they're trained. Absolutely. So, so yeah, but okay, cool. Okay, um, what's your message to the upcoming young athletes? So I would really like that athletes look at their mind as their greatest tool. Right, right now we prepare technically, tactically, strategically. We look at our strength, we look at our fitness, but we often tend to ignore mental tra uh, training. Right, we just expect it to happen through through our experience, uh, through just you know, our own our own understanding, not recognizing that mental training requires the same kind of effort focus. It is just as scientific as all other aspects of training. And so if we're able to incorporate that from a young age, we learn the right kind of mindset. We learn that resilience. We learn that confidence. We also know how to focus. So it's not after a slump that a player will, uh, you know, start reflecting on, on the role of the mind, which is what often tends to happen right now. We want it to not, we want it to be preventive and going in a, you know, a strength conditioning. We want mental strength and mental conditioning. We don't want mental rehabilitation as much, right? So if we can incorporate that from a young age, um, I think that is a message that I would like to give players. 
Fabulous. Thanks for this wonderful message, uh, Divya. Okay, let's come to these uh, short uh, answers. Uh, these are like one word, one line or two line answers. Um, okay, what's your favorite quote? Uh, Viktor Frankl said that uh, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is the power of your choice. Fabulous. Oh my God, I've, I've read a book. Uh, Viktor Frankl, uh, he's, there's a book also. Um, uh, where um, he's mentioned about these uh, camps, concentration camps. Is it the same thing that you're talking about? Man's search for meaning, yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's it's written by the same author, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a wonderful, uh, that book was really amazing. I mean, I still remember, uh, he, uh, you know, him mentioning about hope is so important. Mm. You know, when once the hope dies, then, you know, you lose the, you know, will to live. I mean, so I think uh, hope is so important. Yes, fabulous. Thank you. Okay, who's your role model and why? Uh, my grandfather, my nana. Uh, okay. His ability to maintain social relationships far outweighs anything our generation could do. Uh, and more than anything, I think the curiosity, the open-mindedness, uh, far more tech-savvy at the age of 90 than I was in my 20s. I think the ability to keep being curious, keep learning, uh, that, that's been inspiring. Fabulous. Okay, documentary film that inspired you the most? Uh, inspired? I don't know. I recently watched Weight of Gold, uh, which was very moving. Uh, not sure inspiring, but it spoke about uh, athlete mental health and bringing that to the fore. So that was a very touching uh, and where do you watch it? Sorry, I'm, I have not seen it. Maybe I'll, I'll look for it. Um, I don't know where I saw it. It's made by Michael Phelps and a, and a team of athletes. Talks okay. of, it brings athlete mental health uh, under the spotlight. So it's just a, it's a, it's a touching film. It's something that people in the sporting ecosystem uh, need to watch. You can understand. You can read a person so well. So what's the best thing about that? Uh, best thing about psychology, I think, is the opportunity to make authentic connections with people really have very real conversations and what it does is it, it gives you perspective right? otherwise we seem so we're so caught up in our own words uh, so when we're able to open our eyes and ears and listen to what's going on around us I think it gives great perspective fabulous absolutely so uh, best coaching memory um, it was my teachers supporting me to take up psychology when the rest of the world was saying that you should probably do science because it has more options uh, and just pursue what I love doing. I think that would be my best coaching memory. Awesome. Proudest accomplishment so far? Um, every time a player um, is able to rekindle the joy of playing, the fun of playing, uh, you know, after getting bogged down, after losing interest, when they're able to go back on that court, play with courage, play with fun. Uh, yeah. It is an accomplishment to see that. Super. And with this, we come to the end of the show. Thank you so much, Divya, for joining me in this absolutely fantastic session. Such a big eye-opener and loved, uh, you know, chatting with you. Thank you. Have a blast. Uh -huh. Thank you so much and thank you all for listening to today's episode with your host, Garma Aftar. See you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.